Practice gives you ultimate freedom. The more you practice, the better you get at something, the more skilled you are at it, the more information you have, the more it actually allows you to play more, have more fun, be more flexible, and have ultimately more freedom. This is something I struggled with a lot in the early days of my speaking career. I was asked to speak at a bunch of events and this is what, 20 years ago, I guess, I've had, I've, I've had as a speaking career now. And I used to be so worried about disappointing people that I would memorize my entire speech. I would practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and just memorize my speech to the point where word for word, it would be the exact same thing every time. And I thought that was good. I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Obviously, yes, practice makes perfect. Keep going, keep practicing, keep doing it. And what ended up happening was, yes, I delivered the same speech each time, but I think the worst thing you can do as a speaker is just give the exact same speech every time. We did a session of Movement Makers around uh, signature talk. It was one of the most voted topics was, how do I give my signature talk? And I think having one signature talk is actually not great. I think you should be able to be able to speak to the audience every time. Your job, if you're a speaker, is to give your audience a fantastic experience. And so it's knowing who's in the audience. Don't assume it's the same people every single time, right? So you have to be able to know so much about your subject that then you can have your framework that you operate in, but then give a lot more value to people by making it custom to them. So now whenever I'm doing a speaking gig, I'm always asking, okay, tell me about the audience. Tell me who's here. Tell me why people are signing up. What, what are people here for? Both in terms of the information they're hoping to get, uh, as well as their background and their interests and their concerns and what they struggle with. And of course, there's genuine human struggles that everybody goes through. But why are people here at this conference? And so here's my process right now when I'm doing a, a speech or talk. They're going to have me come in. They're going to talk about belief or entrepreneurship or YouTube. There's going to be some set themes. You're not having me come to talk about my apple strudel recipe because <laughs> I don't have one, right? I'm coming in to talk about things that are inside my domain. Perfect. And I can easily just get up on stage and talk, but I want to know who's in the audience. So before going, I'll ask them, tell me about the people who are going to be here. And then I'll frame my speech around a couple of key ideas that I think would be valuable to that audience. Still sitting within kind of the my usual domain. Perfect. I'll practice it. I'll practice giving a speech. I'll practice the points. At, at home, I'll practice. I'll practice talking to my dog. I'll practice on the airplane on the way over. I'll practice to kind of get a sense of the stories that I want to tell that I think will be the right fit. But then the day before and the day of, I like to be there a little early to, to talk to people, to one makes me feel a little more comfortable um, being able to connect to people in the audience. So it's not just people I don't know, but I've had a few conversations with people. But two, in feeling the vibe out of the event, I'll often end up switching up part of my talk. Again, to make it as customizable as possible to the people that I'm talking to. And this isn't just a speaking thing, guys. This is any interaction you're doing, you're trying to sell your product, you're trying to sell your service, you're on a call with somebody who could use your product or service, hire you as a coach, etc. You have to customize your pitch, customize your talk for them, not just give the same thing every single time you're talking to somebody. You have to know what makes them tick, know why they're talking to you, what their, their deep desires and fears are, and address those things so that you can close the sale, right? It's the same thing. I'm just giving an, an example through speaking. So it's being willing to deviate from your talk to actually give more value. And I think, again, the worst thing you can do as a speaker is just give, get on stage and give the same talk every single time. That's what I used to think was the way to go, but this is actually a lot, lot more valuable because you can inspire people, but one, it becomes boring for you to get up and just do the same thing over and over and over again. And two, if you can customize it to actually address the thing that they're specifically concerned about, you're going to have a bigger impact. Why are you there? You're there to touch people. You're there to move people to a positive direction, right? Again, whether you're, whether you're speaking or you're just talking to somebody on the phone, a potential client, why are you working with them? Yes, they're going to pay you, but why? You want them to get a result. You want them to move. You want them to make a change. You want to solve a problem for them. And so the more you can actually connect to what they're struggling with, the easier it is for you to to close the sale and have the impact that you're trying to have. So it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more impactful, a lot more meaningful. And so that's my usual process now. Why are people here? 
I'll prepare a version of my speech to address those people. And then it always changes up the day of because I met somebody in the lobby who inspired me or I met somebody on the airplane the day before who shifted my thinking a little bit and gives me an extra story to tell. And when you're so prepared and you know your stuff so much, it's easy to add those things in. When you don't really know, you're kind of all over the place. So it's being overly prepared and then the day of being willing to be flexible. It's that like rigidity of practice and practice and practice and knowing what you're doing so much that allows you to play when you show up. It's the, if you, you know, go into sports, you practice your free throws so much, you practice your penalty shots so much, you practice, you practice so much that allows you to be a lot more flexible and play when it comes to game time. Let me share another quick example from the opposite side where I was interviewing somebody. So instead of being the person on stage speaking, I'm interviewing somebody. And I recently had Tony Robbins on the channel. And it was the third time I came on the channel. The first two interviews we did had 3 million views on them combined, which is amazing. And he's coming back for the third time, talking about his new book. And I'm always nervous before a big interview. And this is probably the least nervous I've been because it's the third time on, but I was still nervous going in. And so I'm preparing. I'm preparing and preparing and preparing. I'm trying to find a thread that I care about. I don't want to just ask the same questions everybody else has asked. I don't want to just use the questions that his PR agency sent over because he's going to answer those questions on every other show. I want it to be different and unique and fun and special. And so I prepared. I know I've got uh, half an hour with him. Uh, I know he likes to go long in his stories. So you don't get that many questions in. So I need to, I need to really be careful of what I'm going to say and make this time count. It'd be easy just to show up and ask, okay, why did you write this book? What does it mean to you? What do you hope people get from it? What was your favorite part about it? And then, then half an hour is done and you haven't really asked anything super meaningful. So I'm preparing. And I wrote down on a, a notepad file that I had open when I was talking to him, you know, four questions, five questions that I wanted to ask. And I practiced how I would ask them. I practiced, you know, what, what I was going to say. And then... I practice it so much that come game time, come show time, here we go, Tony's coming on. Let's let's do our one-on-one. -on -one. I was able to actually be present and listen to what it was saying and and play ball with him, right? To to throw and catch with him instead of just going to the questions. When you have him prepared and you're really insecure, you just go to the questions. You just go, okay, here's what I said, okay, here, and just ask the questions. Where the best interviews are when you can throw and catch, right? Where they say something and you take that a little bit deeper as opposed to just moving on to the next question. Because I've watched a lot of interviews in, in the work that I do. And one of the things that I find most frustrating is the person says something amazing and you want them to, it's like, okay, ask a follow-up question. And instead of asking a follow-up question, they just go to the next question. Because the interviewer it was never even listening to what the interviewee was saying. They're just so worried about getting the next question in that that's that's all they're thinking about. And so like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, great. And then tell me about this next question without going deeper into the conversation. So I didn't want to be that kind of interviewer. Even I get it because you're nervous. You're not fully prepared. You're worried about the questions. So one example with Tony, he was talking about a recent health scare that he had and that his career would be over. The doctor said, your career is over. And in my head, I was thinking about some of the other stuff I knew about Tony Robbins. And so I asked him, how many times have you been told that your career is over? <laughs> it was off script, right? It wasn't something his team prepared. It wasn't something Tony's maybe been asked. And I asked him, how many times have you been told that your career has been over? Because I remember, uh, you know, he had this um, tumor that made him grow crazy quickly. And, and people said his life would be over. I remember he burned out his voice box and uh, his doctors told him he'd never speak on stage again. And now this injury that happened to him, he wasn't gonna be able to go and do his event. So he's been told consistently that his career would be over. Uh, and yet he still gets up and he finds a way and he does it, right? One of the things that we love about his ability to follow through and stay consistent. And so in the over preparation and knowing his story and also knowing that I had questions to fall back on in case there was a lull in the conversation, it allows the play. It allows the freedom. It allows you to adjust to the situation, which then creates a much better experience. So whether you're speaking, whether you're interviewing, whether you're coaching, whether you're mentoring, whether you're on a sales call, 
You need to know your script. You need to know what you're gonna say. You need to understand your customer and who you're talking to. You need to know all that and over prepare. But then understand that the greatest asset that you have is not in rehearsing again the script, it's that you have the ability to be free now, that you can play because you've done all the drills and now you need to have the back and forth. It's, it's throwing and catching. I'm gonna throw the ball to you, you're gonna catch it, you're gonna throw the ball back to me. It's not just throwing, where a lot of times, the biggest mistake is that you're just throwing. You're just throwing another one and another one, and here's my other line, here's my next question, here's my next pitch, throw, 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 and the person might be saying, uh-huh, 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 but there's no receiving and them throwing the ball back to you. That's the best part in any interaction. If you have a goal to get them to move forward, to make a change in their life, to, to sign you up, to hire you, to work with you, so that you can make that impact that you're trying to make, there has to be that back and forth. And the more prepared you are, the easier it is to then have the freedom to play. If you want another Evan Rent video that just might give you the confidence you need, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I'm gonna teach you the entrepreneur success formula. This is the formula. It's very simple. It's easy to apply that when you actually execute it, it will change the course of your life and your business. The entrepreneur success formula.